The battle cry this afternoon in Tucson, the same one they've used since 1926. Bear down, and they'll have to because this is Arizona's acid test. Today, in front of a sellout crowd of over 57,000 people in sunny skies, it's a duel in the desert. Two teams with one goal, a trip to the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. But first, the road to Pasadena comes through Tucson. At Arizona Stadium, ABC Sports College Football and the Pac-10 Conference present the USC Trojans against the Arizona Wildcats. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mark Jones in the house along with Tim Brandt, and welcome to the 20th meeting ever between these two teams. Tim, things have really changed at USC, haven't they? Oh, Mark, they've changed dramatically. Tailback U is now throwing the football, and why not? You have Rob Johnson, and he is completing 70% of his passes, 10 touchdowns, only one interception, and he's throwing to perhaps the best wide receiver in the country, Johnny Morton. Just look at his numbers from last week. But since tailback Dwight McFadden got hurt, they really have not had a running game, and that has hurt the Trojans. As a matter of fact, these three guys are trying to step up, get the running game going. It has not happened. Dotson a solid blocker, Fields a slasher, Walters a power guy, but none has really had the full package, and consequently they're ranked eighth in the Pac-10 in rushing, only three yards per carry. And today they're going against the number one run defense in the nation, led by everybody's All-American, Rob Waldrop. He's big, he's strong, he's quick. And I think the best nose guard you'll see in the entire country. I think the key today is if SC can run, that'll be a big difference. Coach Dick Tomey of Arizona says he knows that this is a different type of beast that they are dealing with this afternoon. Back with the opening kickoff after this. We have the SPF. Oh, we'll use about an eight today. Lots of sun, 98 degrees, only 11% humidity. See, and I think that could be a factor this afternoon. It is so hot, fatigue could become a factor. That means depth. Of course, the Wildcats are used to that heat. And it has been very warm in Los Angeles all week. Steve McLaughlin will kick it off for Arizona. They have won the opening toss, but they have elected to defer, putting the defense on the field. Back deep, Ken Grace for USC, as well as David Dotson. Here's the kick. Through and out of the end zone, and the Trojans will start off on their own 20-yard line. The starting quarterback for USC is Rob Johnson. He is completing a gaudy 70% of his passes so far this season. He's a six foot four inch, 220 pound junior from Mission Viejo, California. The backs of the receivers led by the guy we talked about in the opening, Johnny Morton, number 80. He is the team's the leading receiver. USC, averaging 140 yards receiving per outing. First down and 10, the first play of the game, and the Trojans come out with a two tight end set. Passing formation, let's see if they try to change him up and run out of it. The H-back, McWilliams in motion, Johnson under pressure, steps up. And he's tackled at the 27-yard line, and there you see some of the escapability of the USC quarterback. Let's take a look at the backs and the receivers for USC. We talked about Johnny Morton. Johnny McWilliams, the H-back. Dotson, the lead tailback, and that tailback by committee for USC. On the offensive line, Tony Baselli is the leader up front. He wears number 71. He is the Lombardi semifinalist at 295 pounds. The offensive line, a little banged up, though, at the guard position. Dotson and he is rocked but falls forward for the first down over the 30 up to the 31 he was tackled by Sean Sean Harris let's Good take a play strong counter use that offensive line tried to get it to move against that eight-man front that Arizona employs I think we'll see a lot of that a lot of different looks different movement moving linemen using traps using counters so important Tim for USC to establish that running game. Struther and Dotson in the backfield in the offset eye. First down and 10. Dion Struther was tripped up after a gain of maybe two. Look who it is, Teddy Bruschi makes the tackle. He's wild. And speaking of that leading defensive unit in the country, there's a look at Bruschi, number 68. Also up front, Rob Waldrop. Talked about his skills, his many skills. He's an All-American candidate, Sean Harris is the best linebacker of the three. And in the secondary, Brandon Sanders, one of those young leaders with a lot of maturity in the secondary. That secondary will be tested this afternoon by Johnson. Arizona swarming defense, snuffing that one at the 32-yard line. Brant Boyer led the way. 
Watson on the carry. It'll set up third down and long for USC. It's fun to watch this defense. I mean, the guys actually have fun playing it. They bounce around. They've got that little extra excitement every time they make a tackle. Four games into the season, and opponents have run for an incredible minus four yards. Three wide receivers in, Tim, for USC on third and long. The flanker screen. Kirby tackled way short of the first down at the 37-yard line by Jim Hoffman and Brandon Sanders. So it's punting time for USC. So they put the defense on the field, and they respond. John Stonehouse into punt and back deep number four, Chuck Levy. Stonehouse averaging a little over 37 yards per punt. An end over end punt. Bounces at the 26. And it'll be down right at the 26 yard line by USC. Now, Dan White is the starting quarterback. He's a six foot five inch, 211 pound sophomore from San Diego, California. As we look at the backs and receivers for Arizona, Antoine Carter is their leading rusher. He wears number two, and he's a game breaker. The offensive line led by Warner Smith, their most consistent performer so far this season. Johnson and Carter, the starting backs, coming out of the eye. Wildcats not wasting any time in the huddle. First down and 10. Might get a throw early. Completes the pass to Troy Dickey at the 30, who dances around and is swarmed at the 31-yard line. Didn't waste any time in the huddle. Didn't even have a huddle. We talked about the sophomore quarterback. When you watch him play, you'll notice that he has a very unorthodox type of delivery, but it works for him. Last week, he was just 7 of 17, though, with a couple of touchdowns and one interception. Coaches say it reminds them of the way Bernie Kosar releases the ball. But I'll tell you this, this is a relatively inexperienced guy. He's only had five college starts. Transfer from Penn State. Got to learn how to hold on to the ball. Here's Carter on the toss. Carter cuts it upfield and has the first down at the 38-yard line. Carter missed the Pacific game this season with a set of bruised ribs, but last week he had a 76-yard touchdown run. This is a play you're going to see a lot of today. They want to establish that sweep, put a lot of pressure on the corners. Carter's a track guy. He's got that speed to get out on the corner. On the defensive front line, Willie McGinnis, the All-American candidate, and he is an LT-type player. He'll move around and be around the ball a lot this afternoon. White hands it off on first down. Little or no gain on that play. Billy Johnson with a ball carrier. Now, Coach Tomey was saying that this is the first time that he's had Johnson healthy, along with Carter and Levy. Look at the linebackers, Gerald Crothers, Joe Barry, and Jeff Kopp for USC. And in the secondary, Mike Salmon, a very good, strong safety, as well as Jason Seahorn on the left corner. The secondary is one of the strengths of that defensive unit. USC comes in with his nickel package on second and long. They expect the pass. Levy and Lovett. The backs are split. This is Chuck Levy. Levy out to the 44-yard line. Spinning off one tackle and going forward for about five yards. A Utah pass set up by old Lee Grosscup, the quarterback at Utah in the early years. High percentage play. Watch this now. If he drops it, it's an incomplete. But if he makes the catch, whoops, it's a completion. It's a good play. Good way for White to build up some stats, maybe get a little confidence, too. Third down and five to go. The ball on the 44. We're just underway here in the first quarter. 9.52 to play. Lovett and Levy in the backfield. They're split. White looking to pass. The out pattern complete to Terry Vaughn, who's pushed out of bounds at the 42, and he has a first down. Jason Seahorn on the coverage, but a pickup of 14 yards for the Wildcats. I tell you, give so much credit on that play to Danny White, the quarterback. He may be inexperienced, but watch this, because he's got number 55 McGinnis in his face, and yet steps up and fires it at the Vaughn, and that ball's right where it had to be, away from the defensive back Seahorn, perfectly thrown in the face of some pretty good pressure. 
Vaughn from Oceanside, California. Junior college transfer. Here's Carter. Carter cutting back. Carter down to the 28-yard line. A pickup of 19 yards and another first down for Arizona. This offense really taking the game by the throat early, Tim. Here's that sweep we talked about, Mark. We told you Twan Carter is a track guy. He's made an impact with his as a freshman, a sophomore, now as a junior, but he's got that great explosive speed. If he gets the corner, he also has the moves and the acceleration to be very, very quick and strong in the secondary. First down and 10. Run it again, Carter. Running over his center, El Mashtu. We'll have about three yards on first down. The tackle made by Shannon Jones, the middle linebacker. So what do you think? Do you give the uh, Heisman Trophy to Charlie Ward yet? I think it's way too early. I do think it's his to lose. Those three Florida teams, Florida State, Miami, and Florida, playing great football right now. Although Michigan keeps winning. Tyrone Wheatley. Wheatley had three more touchdowns today. The toss on first down. Levy trying to get to the corner. A flag down. Levy run out of bounds at the 23 going to be holding against Arizona. They'll move him back, nullify the game. Gerald Crothers pushed Levy out of bounds that time. Pat Flood, our official today. Tim, one of the things that the Arizona coaching staff wanted to establish early was the pass, something they haven't done well or consistently this year. But Tommy said he wanted to make a concerted effort to do that. Well, he says the pass has been there. They just haven't capitalized on it yet. The offense is run-oriented. But as long as they have that pass, it just opens the run up that much more. 8.38 remaining in the first quarter. Zeros on the scoreboard. Arizona with the ball on their first possession. It's second down and eight. Mark, the thing about Arizona, everybody knows how strong the defense is. It's the best in the country. Offensively, there's a lot of talent. They're able to move the football, but what's hurt them this year is turnovers. Turnovers have been a major factor, although they continue to win. That's very uncharacteristic of Dick Tomey teams. Well, look at White. Four touchdowns, but four interceptions and a whole handful of fumbles. Three wide receivers in on second and long. White fumbles it and pounces on it, just like we were talking about. Miscues still haunting Arizona. Not sure what happened there. Maybe he just took his eye off the ball. Maybe he wasn't concentrating. Oh, uh, it looked like a bad snap. Elmash Tube, who's an experienced center. Look at that. See, the snap is way too low. It comes from Elmash Tube. And he's a junior who has actually started, so that brings up third down and forever. But that's what we were talking about. They've got the talent, they've got the, the athletes. They make big plays, but then they hurt themselves with turnovers and mistakes like that one. Third down and Phoenix to go. Third and 30. Out of the shotgun. Downfield complete to Richard Dice. The Dice man near the first down. He may have it, a pickup of 31 yards. A clutch play on third and long. He does have it. He'll move the chains, and that'll drive John Robinson nuts. They need 30 for a first down, and they pick it up. Dice had three receptions for a total of 50 yards coming into this one. There is a flag. Illegal formation on the offense. Oh, baby, does that hurt? It's not parallel to the line. Repeat third down. See what we mean about mistakes? That play was well conceived. Dice coming over the middle. Now he signed late last year, actually signed in August, but he has been a bonus to the program. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Counting the guys on the line. Well, you know, the thing about prevent defense when you're playing soft is the fact that they can come in and there's so much air created you leave openings to make the catch, and if the guy does have enough air and can turn it up, he'll get the first like that. That's why I think, forget the prevent. Come on up, play defense like you normally do, even if you do need 35 yards. White again, looking for Dice again. Dice couldn't haul it in at the eight-yard line, got turned around and 
Got his legs caught up underneath him a little bit, and it's incomplete. He was working on Jason Seahorn, the corner. But he had gotten behind his man. An incompletion, but a lot of aggression offensively for Arizona. They're going after it early. Matt Payton into punt. He's standing on his own 32, and Jason Seahorn is standing on his own 11 for USC. Just over seven minutes remaining here in the first quarter. A high, spiraling punt. Short. The 27 and bouncing upwards. Takes a USC bounce. That punt didn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. 6.57, we're just underway here in Tucson, Arizona. Back after this. Just northwest of Kalispell, Montana, there's a place where you can punch cattle instead of a time clock and discover what horsepower is really about. It's the Hargrave Cattle and Guest Ranch, where you can ride them and rope them like they used to. But if you go, you got to pull your own weight and pull out your piece of card. Because at Hargrave, they don't take the tin horns and they don't take American Express. Visa is everywhere you want to be. Football. It's a duel in the pool as Dan Marino and the Dolphins host the Washington Redskins on ABC's Monday Night Football. Back in Tucson, Arizona, Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt to look at the majestic Santa Catalina Mountains in the backdrop. 0-0. Zero, zero. We're just underway here in the first quarter. 6.57 to go in the period. First and 10 for the Trojans. That's Dotson. He's up to the 35-yard line. Arizona coming into this game ranked number 12 in the country. 1-0 in the Pac-10. USC also 1-0 in the Pac-10 conference play. USC has had some problems on that offensive line. Len Goricki and Joel Chrisman, they're out with injuries. The guard position specifically with Pollock out as well. Ramsey moves up and they're thin. Johnson. Complete to Morton at the 47-yard line. First down, USC. He is so smooth, working against Jay Phillips. Took him to the outside, came back for the football. He has had a record-setting, uh, maybe career, week anyway, season. Set a school record with 15 catches against Houston a few weeks ago. Guess who his football idol is? Who's that? None other than Lynn Swan. Not a bad one to have. 33 receptions, four touchdowns already this year for Morton. Johnson on first down, looking up top for Grace, and he overthrows him at the 20-yard line. This Arizona defense is not complicated. It's a movement scheme. Move to the gaps, play it inside out. It's an eight-man front, and they can run to the football. But what they're really trying to do here is challenge USC to run the ball, forcing them to pass. They're loading up eight-man front and saying, come on, run at us. We'll stop that. You go ahead and try to beat us with the pass. Simplicity, a big part of the success also of this Arizona defense. Well, it's so simple, in fact, it's hard to read. You always have the free safety right in the middle of the field deep. Second down and 10. Struther on the carry out to midfield. He's down at the 49. Deion Struther, a converted tailback, now playing fullback. Next Saturday, ABC Sports presents a blockbuster double dip at 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. National title hopes on the line in the biggest game of the season. Number one, Florida State, host number three, Miami. Followed by regional action, the game you'll see, Washington, number 15 against number 17, Cal. Cal with a tremendous comeback effort this afternoon up in Eugene, Oregon. Three wide receivers in for Johnson, and Johnson goes down, and he goes down hard. Sean Jarrett with the sack. And we have a USC lineman injured. That's the All-American Tony Baselli. They have been plagued by injuries this season, especially on the offensive line. We just talked about how thin they are on that offensive line. Now with Baselli down, Catterling will have to move up, but they just get worse at that situation, at that position. Tony Baselli slimmed down to 295 this year. Felt a lot quicker and felt a lot stronger. 
Lombardi candidate, All-American, as you mentioned, 6'8". Has slimmed down a little bit, but he's obviously in pain. And you can tell he's upset, too, at being injured. Bad news for John Robinson and his staff. We're going to take a short break as they take a break on the field. You're looking at the All-American USC offensive tackle, Tony Baselli, being helped off the field. He has suffered some sort of leg injury. We hope to get a report from the sidelines and pass it along to you later. Fourth down, USC punting. Paul Stonehouse on his own 29. Richard Dice standing back at the 20. Dice bounces off one. Dice out to the 32-yard line. A 36-yard punt and eight on the return. It is warm down on the field. College football and ABC Sports brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. Payne Weber, we believe in our most important investment, is an investment in relationships. New advanced high-tech formula Quaker State Motor Oil. It's formulated for today's high-tech engines. And Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. First and 10, that's Chuck Levy running off the left tackle. Levy has a couple of yards. Maselli's still upset at being injured. You know, Tim, it's interesting to note that he is not wearing one of those knee braces. Not that that's what the injury is. We don't know that yet. I couldn't tell, Mark. He had it taped. He could have taped over the stabler knee brace that you talk about that the linemen wear for protective use. So it was very difficult to tell. I can tell you this, John Robinson, the head coach, concerned for his All-American, was right out in the middle of that field when Vaselli went down. He visibly moved and a little bit upset. Second down and nine for Arizona. White to the far side of the field, incomplete. He tried to hit Terry Vaughn. This kid's throwing the ball very, very well early on. That was a dart, but it was incomplete. It'll be third down and nine. Watch the left hand of your screen. We're watching Baselli, number 71, all the way to the left. Watch this. He gets rolled up on from the back side. Oh, that's ugly. One of the most delicate joints on the entire body. The well, knee. it is the weakest joint on the strongest limb of the body. And there's a guy that's carrying almost 300 pounds. The ball at the 32, third down and nine, 421 to play in the first quarter. Levy. He'll be short of the first down by about three yards, and it'll be punting time for Arizona. The tackle made by the strong safety, Mike Salmon. John Robinson, his second time around at USC, his first time around in his first bit of tenure, he won 80% of his games. He says he enjoys the game a little bit more now. I'm going to tell you something. John Robinson looked so relaxed the other day when we were visiting with him. I remember seeing him at the end uh, with the Rams, and he was just kind of beaten down. He's got new life. He's got a bounce back in his step. The smile's back on his face. The very congenial John Robinson we used to know. Hunt takes Seahorn back to the 18. Seahorn gang tackled at the 27-yard line. A 45-yard punt and 10 on the return. Still zeros on the scoreboard with 3.32 remaining in Tucson, Arizona. We'll be right back. Weather is tough on everybody. 98 degrees when the game started. Hotter than that down on the field. Obviously, even the cheerleaders are feeling the effect. The ball loose. Arizona says they have it. They do. So do the officials. A box snap, and Dick Tomey's Wildcats have the ball in tremendous field position. Watch Johnson see if he ever has the ball. He doesn't. It's a bad snap or a bad take back by Johnson. But nonetheless, the ball's on the ground. Brant Boyer comes up with it, 48. Poor exchange and a big mistake for USC because Arizona now has tremendous field position at the 26. You shorten the field that much, it's like running downhill. No on-field huddle. You come right in with the play, backs out of the eye. White hands it off to Carter. He hesitates nicely. Tackle at the 25. Look at the respective turnover margins from 92 and 93 for Arizona. A swing of 17. Not the type of swing that Dick Tomey wants to see either.
Arizona, 23 sacks on the year, seven fumble recoveries, two interceptions. Second down and six. It's Carter again, right up the middle. And we just received a report from the sidelines that USC's Tony Baselli, the offensive tackle, has a dislocated left kneecap. And he is out of the game. Hopefully, it is not a career-threatening injury. Baselli, an All-American, but through for this afternoon. Offensive line right now for Arizona, firing out, controlling the line of scrimmage. Levy checks into the game. He's the deep back in the eye. White. Out of the pocket and incomplete. He tried to hit Terry Vaughn on the out pattern at the 10-yard line. Vaughn covered by Jason Seahorn, but pressure that time by none other than Willie McGinnis. McGinnis is the guy we said we wanted to watch the entire game. He's explosive. He put the pressure that time on White, which forced the bad throw. McGinnis is a semifinalist for that Lombardi Award. I want to tell you something. He creates havoc. On fourth down, Steve McLaughlin into attempt a field goal from 37 yards out. He's five of eight on the season. And this one's good. There is a flag down. Flag down on the field. McLaughlin knocks it through. If it's against USC, it could be an Arizona first down. You take points off the board, Tim? Well, let's wait and see what it is and where they place the ball, number one. Still waiting for a call from the officiating crew. Tommy in his seventh year as head coach at Arizona. Causing the offensive man to move up. No play. Have him before the snap. We play the down. Actually, that's a break for USC. Watch the defensive guy move into the neutral zone right there. No contact is made. The foul is before the snap. The offense jumped as well. They blew the whistle before the, the play began. So this will be a 37-yard attempt. And from this distance, he's 0 for 1, McLaughlin is for the year. So bring that one back that he just made. He's still 0 for 1. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, he's forced to do it again. McLaughlin had some trouble last week. Same thing. This time there is contact. And this time it'll be a first down for Arizona. All this time. USC is saying that Arizona moved, but I don't think the officials are buying it. John Robinson protesting vehemently on the sidelines. But to no avail, it's against USC. That's a first down, so you don't even have to worry about taking three points off the board. Looks like a replay, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, re-rack it, though. And if you look at the top of the screen, 42, the last down lineman for Arizona, I think he did move. Doesn't make any difference. Too late now. Moot point. Penalty against USC. First down, Arizona. That'll give Coach Robinson a few more gray hairs. Well, USC was complaining that Lamar Harris, the tight end, had moved. Two tight ends in for Arizona. Billy Johnson slips, gets back up, and is tackled at the 18. Johnson, a 5'10", 201-inch, 201-pound senior from San Jose, California. He was tackled by Jason Oliver. He averages 5.7 yards per carry. So they put the ball down on the 14-yard line. Great field position for Arizona. Dick Tomey saying that this is the first time all season that he's had his three backs, Carter, Levy, and Johnson, healthy at the same time. This drive started because Johnson fumbled the snap. White to pass into the end zone. Dickey, touchdown! Touchdown, Wildcats!
Troy Dickey with a 14-yard touchdown reception, and it's 6-0 for Arizona. This ball's perfectly thrown by White. It's the fade pattern and timing pattern. Right now, Herpin, the defensive back's not even looking. He knows it's a touchdown. He knows he put it right there for Dickey. McLaughlin with the extra point, and it's good. He had missed one last week, but he knocks that one through. Five plays, 26 yards. Troy Dickey, the All-American from Junior College in Coffeyville. Watch this. It's his third touchdown of the year. White puts it right there for him. Herpin doesn't even see it coming, number one. And look at this. Get the feet down, touchdown, Troy Dickey. A little bit of a height advantage, too. Dickey, Tim, at 6'3", Herpin at just six feet. He was the nation's number one junior college receiver. Came in here to Arizona, and he has been some kind of productive. He now has 15 receptions, three touchdowns this year. He was their leading receiver in 1992. Arizona with a 7 to nothing lead, and Tim, as we look at Dickey, what do you think about the quarterback, Dan White, so far? He's throwing the ball extremely well right now and with a great deal of confidence. You know, they've worked a lot with him here recently to quicken his motion, to get him to throw it a little bit quicker. He's doing that today, and consequently, he's been able to avoid the rush by Willie McGinnis. Back to get the kick. Kenny Grace and David Dotson for USC. They trail 7 to nothing. Both teams 1-0 in the Pac-10. This is a pivotal game for both teams. Lachlan's kick down at the five to Grace. And Grace has an alley. Grace with a nice return out to the 47-yard line where the kicker, Steve McLaughlin, pushed him out of bounds. But there was a body that went curling through the air, Tim, at the 20-yard line for Arizona. A 43-yard return. Boy, he knows where he's going right now, taking it to the outside, hoping somebody leaves their lanes. They get some great blocks. There's no question but the fact he knows now he's got to beat the kicker to score. Can't do it. I'll tell you, that's a nice play in the open field by Steve McLaughlin, the place kicker, but Ken Grace with a huge return. McLaughlin doesn't want to have to make too many tackles. He's been picked up a little bit this season. On first down, the Trojans run it, and it is stuffed. You know, on that touchdown by Arizona, we're talking about White, we're talking about Dickey, the receiver, but that touchdown was set up by the defense, same M.O. that this club uses a lot. Tim, what about that comeback today by Cal? That was amazing. They were oh. down 30 to nothing, something like that. 42 to 41. That sets up a huge game for them next week against Washington. That'll be the regional game you'll see in this area. There's a look at Tony Baselli, the All-American left tackle, who's out. He dislocated his kneecap. Hopefully not the end of the season for Baselli. We have a timeout down in the field as Arizona calls time. 7-0, the Wildcats with the lead. Now a parent showing concern for her son, who is out of the game with a dislocated kneecap. Here he is on the sidelines, the starting offensive tackle, the All-American. Mother's concern. You just hate to see that kind of thing happen. We have 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and Arizona leads 7 to nothing on an absolutely gorgeous Saturday afternoon here in Tucson. USC with the ball, second down and 10 at the 46. Johnson looking to the near side, has his main man, Johnny Morton, complete at the 44. And he's right near the first down mark. Well, I want to tell you, he threw a dart. Jay Phillips had pretty good coverage. He just fired that thing in there. A lot of consternation and concern on the part of the Arizona coaches and their secondary. They haven't faced the type of talent that USC has. Now, when you think they beat UTEP, that was an option team. Pacific never threw deep. Illinois, freshman quarterback, Oregon State, option team. This is by far the toughest opponent. Seconds to go in the first quarter. Two tight ends in for USC. They punch it forward for the first down. It'll be close, depending on the mark. No signal yet. I'll tell you, this defense takes great pride in its short yardage defense. 
They're going to bring the chains out. Like we said, this is an acid test for Arizona. I think it is for both. It's an indicator. That's what the coaches want to find out how good they really are. With USC, though, they have played a slightly higher level of competition in the likes of Penn State. Next week, Arizona with the week off. They didn't get it. I'll tell you what, I'd line right back up and go after it again if I was USC. I'd say, let's go up and line head-to-head -head with the number one defense in the country and see if we can get a half a foot. They're going to. They're going after it. I like this. You know, John Robinson has been very aggressive in his decision-making all season. He went for the win at Penn State. And that's the type of attitude he's trying to instill in his team. This is an intelligent football crowd, too. They know what this means and what's at stake for the defense. Time for the real men to stand up and be accounted for on fourth and inches. <laughs> but we will have to wait. Suspense. <laughs> the drama continues to build in Tucson. Two undefeated Pac-10 teams vying for jockeying position in the Pac-10 standing. 7-0, we'll be back. Women and children to bed. It's time to go hunting for dinner. Fourth and inches, Johnson on the quarterback sneak. I don't think he got it. There was a surge in the middle by that Arizona defense, Tim, led by Rob Waldron. You know, I've never understood these marks. I don't know how they do these. They guess. They sit, they watch, they, they look from a distance at his forward progress, they guess at it, they come up, they put their foot down like it's authoritative, and they put it down. You know, with that mark, they may have it, but I don't think they did. I think Arizona held. You can see Waldrop, number 92. He led the charge in the middle. And they held. Arizona wins the first crucial battle of the game. Did you see how close that was? The first line of defense in short yardage is for the down lineman to go into the offensive past the line of scrimmage and establish a new line of scrimmage. Look at this. Now the linebackers have to fill over the top. They do. They take Johnson. He gains absolutely nothing. Great stop by the Arizona D. The desert swarm was swarming. They learned a lot about themselves on that play. You know who leads it too, don't you? The guy we talked about at the top, Rob Waldrop. First down and 10 for Dan White. To Dickey on the out pattern. It's complete, and he's right near the first down marker. Troy Dickey, the man that caught the touchdown pass just a few moments ago for Arizona. A pickup of 11 yards and a first down. He is a big, strong target. All right, let's analyze the game to this point. As a matter of fact, it was a turnover by USC, which set up the first touchdown for Arizona, the only touchdown. Then USC has a fourth and in inches, and they don't make it. Right now, it's all Arizona. Larry McDuff, the defensive coordinator there for Arizona, you saw him on the sidelines. The handoff is to Billy Johnson that time on first down. He'll have about two yards. Dick Tomey says that Billy Johnson is a very underrated back. He missed the Illinois game with a quadriceps injury. He played very little against Oregon State. Well, he still has that problem with his quad. You know, he came in, he had a problem with his Achilles and actually had to sit out for a long time. 5'10", 201 pounder, but he's got a six yard average. He is a quality back. Just underway here in the second quarter. Arizona just stopped USC on fourth and inches. And here's Chuck Levy motoring down the field, down to the 32 yard line before he's finally tackled by Brian Williams, but a pickup of 11 and another Wildcat first down. You know, we talked about USC's tailback situation, but Arizona's, they use a tailback by committee situation as well, but their guys are all healthy now, and it's a very potent attack. Carter, Levy, and Taylor. This time it's Levy and Lovett in the backfield. Looking to the wide side of the field, complete to Kerry Taylor. And he's near the first down marker. 
You know, when Danny White came to Arizona, there were high expectations. When he started the year, everybody looked at him and saw a 6'5", 211-pound, strong-arm quarterback. They said, hey, we've got a guy like Dan Marino now. Well, that was a lot to put on this kid because he really hadn't had any experience. This is his fifth start. You can see just the way he moves. He bounces. He's confident now. He's had the repetitions. He's in charge of this offense. It's his team now. And right now, folks, he's throwing darts. And when he starts to fill out just a little bit, he'll be dangerous. Levy. Running off the left tackle down to the 20-yard line that time. Tackled by Mike Hins. White had those five fumbles in the first four games. And the coaches went back and looked at the film and tried to find out how, in fact, he was fumbling the ball. What was happening is he was concentrating so hard and so focused on the receivers and fearless, never did feel the pressure coming, and he'd get hit and fumble the football. Tim, that's just something that you learn through experience, though, isn't it? It's the repetitions that he's gotten in the first four games. Today, he's unloading that ball a lot quicker than he has at the beginning of the year. Carter and Johnson, the back split. White looking into the end zone, hit from behind, and it's up into the third row. He's looking for Troy Dickey again. Every time White gets hit like this, I guarantee you the coaches just hold their breath because Brady Batten, the backup, is hurt. Ryan Hessen would have to come in if anything happened to White. And I'm here to tell you, he got his ticket punched right there. But Ryan Hessen would have to come in, and he hadn't even taken a snap before in college football. White healthy right now, though, and five for nine for a total of 55 yards and one touchdown pass. The ball in the 21, third down and eight. Taylor split to the short side of the field. Dice to the wide side of the field. Shovel pass to Levy. And Levy is down to the 18. Scratch that Billy Johnson. Twelve fifty to go in the second quarter. And Arizona attempting another field goal. Steve McLaughlin coming in. He hit one earlier. And this one will come from 30, pardon me, 37 yards out. Didn't hit one earlier. That was called back, so it's not on the board. He's 0 for 1 for this distance this year. Make it 0 for 2. Yep. McLaughlin says he's been bothered by a hip pointer injury, but he's not using that as an excuse. His mechanics are still off, and Arizona still leads, though, 7-0. Back in Tucson, Tony Baselli of USC, the starting offensive tackle and the All-American being worked on on the sidelines. So sad to see a guy of that talent out with a bad knee. Rob Johnson back to pass, and he's hit from behind, and it's incomplete. He tried to hit Johnny Morton. Number 18, Brandon Sanders, the strong safety. Jim Hoffman, the Pac-10 player of the week two weeks ago, really came through cleanly. USC today, Tim, 11 rushes for a total of 11 yards. Not surprising. That's been the consistency of that Arizona defense all season. Big thing for John Robinson is to tell his kids to maintain their composure. 12-18 to play in the first half. New tailback in. That's Scott Fields, his first carry of the afternoon. Fields out over the 20 to the 21-yard line. And Baselli being carted into the locker room. You know, John Robinson was talking about the fact that he likes being back in the college system because he gets involved with his kids and his players, and there's a caring feeling between the coaches and the players. Obvious concern right now, not only for Baselli, but for his entire ball club, trying to hold them together. Third down and nine. The pass complete to Grace at the 22, but he's far short of the first down. Wrapped up immediately, Claudius Wright, number five. Those quarters are going to be tested this afternoon, and so far they've responded. Claudius Wright plays that as well as you can, folks. He was out there by himself. Right, a JC transfer, redshirted last season. Progressing very well this year. Levy back on his own 25. John Stonehouse standing on his own eight-yard line for USC. off a nice punt. 
Levy gets Whoa. racked up right away. What a hit. Number 22, Von Oppel. Terrell Hopper with the hit that time, a 47-yard punt. Nothing doing on the return. Hitachi. Hmm. They make a... Uh... Oh, oh, great shot. Now, what was I saying? Hitachi makes camcorders and 20,000 other products worth celebrating. Hitachi. Dick Tomey's defense has held USC to 11 yards rushing on 11 carries. We asked him what makes his defense so special. It's a great group of guys, and they have tremendous pride. They really are offended if people score, and they don't expect people to score. Uh, we know holding SC is going to be really difficult, but they enjoy that kind of challenge. So far, they got it. Hold them the one yard per carry. USC with only four rushes for positive yardage. 11 minutes to go in the first half, and the sophomore says, I think I want to talk with my coach as the time clock wound down. Again, he's showing pretty good composure. He came up, he tried to recognize the defense. This was something we talked to Dick Tomey about yesterday, and he said, you know, he's still not in that groove where he has to locate the clock, make sure the 25-second clock is not about to expire, read the defense, get his keys, then change or check out if he has to. That time he looked up, he saw the time expire, and said, hey, we're down to two, timeout. Well, one guy that knows a little bit about reading defenses when he played at USC, this guy, Frank Gifford. Look at the helmet. Got the ear flaps on that bad boy. Monday night on ABC Sports, another quarterback that knows something about throwing and reading defenses. Dan Marino's Miami Dolphins taking on the Washington Redskins. 6 o'clock Pacific, 7 o'clock Mountain Time, 9 o'clock Eastern. Boy, the Redskins are really some kind of banged up. Mark Ripken won't be back again this week. Although he did start to practice, he says the knee's not stable enough to play, but he does hope to be back for next week's Giants game. Dan Marino actually ran for a touchdown up in Buffalo last week. I saw him. He didn't want to do it. Carter running, not for a touchdown, but pretty nice run on first down and 10 for Arizona, tackled by Mike Hins. I'll tell you this, if, if Danny doesn't have to run, he won't. <laughs> I'd rather take a limo to the end zone. Is that the way it goes? I said, Dan, what happens if your legs go? He says, hey, as long as I've got my arm, I can play in the NFL. And he's right. Carter, six rushes today. Pretty productive. Ten and a half minutes to play in the first half. Arizona leads seven to nothing. The 12th ranked team in the country. A handoff to Billy Johnson. Tries going up the middle over the center, El Mashtub, and then rolls off the left guard. Tackled by Hens again. It was a nice play by Hens, too, because he had to hold on. He was trying to break away. He held on and pulled him down. So it'll bring up third down and short. You know, on a day like this, Tim, when it's 98 degrees and probably warmer on the field, you need a lot of backs to keep the legs fresh, don't you? Yeah, you do. And both sides are playing them, too. Arizona's gone two deep, three deep for USC. Johnson smacked right near the line of scrimmage. Now he's sure if he made it. He's right at the first down marker. I think he's got enough for the first, depending on the mark. His second effort got it. I think the nose of the ball is just enough to get the first. It is. And they're not even going to measure this time. Joe Barry and... Gideon Merrill with air. Penn State doing a number on Maryland. As history would have it, it remains the same, huh? Well, that's no big surprise. I I'll tell you this year, Maryland is 106 out of 106 schools defensively in Division 1A. What is They're it, Mar Playing all freshmen. Maryland's only beaten them one once? Once, yeah, back in the 1960s. Dick Shiner was the quarterback. Ball on the 41st down for Dan White. Wide open is tight end Roderick Lewis. He has a pickup of close to eight yards, tackled by the strong safety, Mike Salmon. Talk about a big target. Lewis is 6'5", 260 pounds. He's out of Dallas, Texas. That was a blown coverage, though. He just slipped out into the flats, and the linebackers didn't pick him up. Coach Tomey talked about wanting to go to him more in the offense and integrate him some more. Second down and one to go. 
Eight forty remaining in the first half. Arizona leads seven nothing. Play action by White. Looking downfield to Taylor. And he caught it. Carry Taylor down to the seven yard line. And White thread the needle that time. Mike Salmon made the tackle, but not after a 44 yard pickup. Watch this, two tight ends running formation. They fake the lead, he play action. Everybody stops, including number one Herp in the cornerback. Now he's got to make up, he's got to recover, never does. Looked like a little push, got away with it by Taylor, but that's a great throw by White, set up by the play action. Watch the little push at the end of this. Whoop, push him, make the catch. Still, Herpin had his back to it. He got sucked in by the play action and couldn't recover. Taylor, the fastest of their receivers. First down and goal for Arizona. And a timeout down on the field. Boy, Dan White has really shown his goods this afternoon. Timeout SC. Had a guy trying to get off the field, didn't get off on time, so they called timeout. It's a good call anyway to regroup with 8.15 to go. Down by seven. Arizona threatening again. USC with two timeouts remaining. Arizona with one. Dick Tomey, the former coach at the University of Hawaii. Actually coached with Terry Donahue at UCLA for a while, too. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And for the 23rd year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. We were talking about Dan White. Dwayne Aquina, the offensive coordinator, is trying to quicken up his motion, but it's not a problem today, Tim. No, he's done a great job. Dwayne Aquina, I think he's an outstanding coach, quite a personality. You know, he used to be Warren Moon's roommate in college. He's up here in the booth somewhere, knocking his head against the glass. He's not happy to be up here. He wants to be on the field. First and goal, that's Levy trying to get to the corner. Levy didn't make it. He's about seven inches from the goal line. Knocked out of bounds by Jason Oliver, the free safety. We told you at the beginning of the game, Arizona wants to use that sweep. They've got to get to the corners. They use speed to do it. But if you watch this, this is a missed tackle on the outside. You've got to keep your outside free. Cannot lose that leverage. And Salmon should have wrapped him up and didn't. Finally knocked out of bounds by Oliver. But they had containment. Lost his leverage and didn't wrap up on the tackle. White wants to take it himself. Waiting for a signal, yes, but there's a flag down. I don't think so. There's something down on the field. That's a football thrown from the stands. That's a touchdown, I believe. Touchdown, Arizona. Something came flying out of the field that looked like a flag. Oh, it's a yellow football. <laughs> Flags don't look like little yellow footballs. This place is rocking. And the band plays on. McLaughlin for the extra point. And the Arizona Wildcats proving themselves to be worthy of that number 12 ranking in the country so far. They lead the USC Trojans 14 to nothing. University of Arizona graduate Luis Torres uses his education every day. Founder of the Tucson Latin Jazz Orchestra, he writes and arranges symphonic music, freelances as a producer, and performs regularly. Luis Torres uses the skills he honed in the classroom and through his music enriches us all. The University of Arizona, shaping a brighter tomorrow for Arizona and the world. Arizona has lost 16 of the 19 meetings between these two teams, but so far they lead today 14 to nothing. Yeah, but Arizona's won two of the last three. Don't forget that. And how about Danny White? White comes out, he's 7 for 11 today, 108 yards, one touchdown, and a touchdown run. New hero out here in Tucson. We're printing the t-shirts as we speak. Ken Grayson, David Dotson back deep. 
kickoff is short. Dotson at the 12. Now is he touched? Down. That one's not in the playbook. McLaughlin didn't want to have to make a tackle. You know, you've got to give these guys a lot of credit in the offensive line. Watch them fire out. Togo Wide, Johnson, Elmush, Tube, Smith, Chaska. They fire out, give White the opportunity just to go on in. No question about the touchdown. White 6'5", used every bit of that 211 pounds to get across that goal line. And right now, Arizona is just dominating this game. National League West, one more day. They have a playoff. It'll be Monday in San Francisco. Can you give me a ticket? Book it. Ted Bruschi, the sophomore, who leads the team with seven and a half sacks coming into this game. Racked up one more there. Did a little style in afterwards. He had five tackles, three sacks against Illinois. He was the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week. We talked about him being the most excited player, if not the most exciting. He loves to play this game. Gets upset sometimes. He goes into a different zone, and the players have to hit his helmet and say, hey, we're over here. Come on, Teddy. He gave Norberto Garrido Winburn blind bullet by him that time. Morton complete out to the 12-yard line, but immediately tackled by Jay Phillips. Boy, this defense is really fired up. Call it Desert Swarm. They don't like the new name, the Cactus Curtain. They get upset when people call them that. I'll just call them the Wildcat Wildmen. Here's the new name, think that'll stick? We'll lob a few out throughout the course of the afternoon. The Desert Posse, maybe another one. Arizona Arsenal. Stop us before we hurt somebody. Third down and 14. Good coverage downfield. Johnson running it. And knocked out of bounds at the 13-yard line by the other Sean, Sean Jarrett. Hunting time for USC. SC does not even get back to the line of scrimmage. Jarrett led the charge. They move him around. This defense is phenomenal. And there's the guy that makes it go, the coordinator, Larry McDuff. And he said he wasn't big on Desert Swarm, but he says it's better than Swiss cheese. Stonehouse. Leaving at the 41. to beat. Chuck Levy is in the house. Touchdown, Arizona. A 59-yard bolt of lightning. You think they don't love football here in Arizona? This time there is a flag down. <laughs> to keep that ball out of the stands. These guys want to go to the Rose Bowl. That might be the next thing they throw on the field. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Repeat the try. So McLaughlin will have his second re-kick of the afternoon. 6.22 to play in the first half, and it's been all Arizona. You know, Tim, you look back to one of the key early points in the game. You think about that fourth and inches when the Desert Swarm defense held. Even prior to that, it was the missed snap. Johnson left it on the ground. Arizona scored, and that just started it. Then the fourth and short. Lachlan doing it again from the 25, and a 25-yard PAT is good. No flags on the field. No footballs thrown out from the stands.
This is a very good punt, but watch Levy now. He's a first-team all-conference guy as an all-purpose back, and this is why when a kicker does try to wrap him up, watch him spin. Bam, spin, get away from him, little tap dance. Now he knows he's got a blocker in front of him, and he just carries it on in. I tell you what, that's a big-time play, and that's a nice block down by Armin Williams on the goal line. Very good. Uh, it was a key block, yes. Sure was. Too early to say that USC is dangerously close to falling out of this? Well, I think it is too early for that, especially after what Cal did today. Would they make up 30 points? Yep. It's not the type of position that you want to put your offense in. A couple of clean heads on the sidelines. Richard Dice and Chuck Levy. Arizona 4-0, 1-0 in the Pac-10. McLaughlin with the kick. Another short one down to the 18. That's Sean Walters, the backup tailback. And another flag. We said coming into the game that USC was having troubles with its running game. They haven't been able to establish it so far this afternoon. I thought I saw an illegal block, but we'll wait and see. Return. Ten that, yards from the spot of the foul. First and ten. That's an illegal block if you hold them. <laughs> Can't tackle them. That's as illegal as they get. Can't tackle them when you're on offense. One thing that's got to bother John Robinson is the fact that his team has been up one week, down the next week. Win, lose, win, lose. They've split four games so far this season. But they started with that big loss to Carolina, 31-9. But since that time, the last three games, they've outscored opponents 114-30. to They get the ball to their H-back this time. Johnny McWilliams. A big target at 6-5. He's tackled by Brandon Sanders, the strong safety. Here's a look at what happened in the first half with USC, Tim. Look where they started. Not great field position. No, but the first two punts didn't really hurt them. But the fumble by Johnson on the snap, that killed them. Short in the field. They went in, Arizona did, from 36 yards out. Scored the touchdown. Then it was down on downs when they missed fourth and inches. Since that time, they've not been able to generate anything. Second and five, and they still can't generate a running game either. Dotson stacked up after a gain of maybe a yard and a half. Grant Boyer making the tackle that time. Defense and special teams. That's big here in Arizona. You know that punt return by Levy's the first punt return for a touchdown against USC since 1983. Third down and three for USC. 5.05 to play in the first half. They trail big. Complete over the middle to the tight end. That's Bradford Banta. This Arizona defense, very proficient so far this afternoon and on the season. First in total defense, first in rushing defense, third in scoring defense. That's not bad. Today, especially since they had a top defense last year. They just reload. They've got a scoop if they get allow positive yardage. Hasn't happened often. The pass complete to the 31 yard line to Johnny Morton. Busy day in college football. Back to New York and John Saunders. Mark number two, Alabama facing South Carolina. Sherman Williams, four straight games over 100 yards rushing. And here's a nine-yard touchdown run as the Crimson Tide leads South Carolina 7 to nothing. Penn State and Maryland also underway, and Penn State has a lead. Mark. All right, John, right here. Four minutes and change remaining in the first half. Rob Johnson running out of the pocket, and he's almost picked off by Brandon Sanders. He had a beat on the ball, went high, but couldn't bring it down with both hands. You know, it surprised me. We were talking to defensive coordinator Larry McDuff yesterday. He was talking about Sanders, and he said the thing about Sanders is he could be the best strong safety who has ever played at Arizona. So I thought, well, that's pretty, pretty high compliment. The guy is only a sophomore, could be the best ever. 
This ball's not badly thrown, but it's great coverage. And see Sanders going up. He had the underneath coverage from a strong safety spot. Yeah, his poise and his leadership really belie his age. Johnson, 8 of 11 for just 44 yards. The flanker screen incomplete intended for Ken Grace. That's the type of afternoon it's been for the Trojans. Yeah, it really has. They're frustrated right now. And that big momentum train just rolling down the tracks for Arizona. There's a look at Larry McDuff. Former player at Oklahoma. Outstanding coach. Interesting how he said that that defensive philosophy has just kind of evolved through an evolution. Levy again. This time brought down at the 40 yard line. That's a pretty good tackle, too. 43 yard punt, 15 on the return. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from all of today's action including that big comeback by Cal. Defensively right now, Southern Cal has to make something happen. Where can I get one of those haircuts? Hey, from the back, that looks like Dick Buck's son. You think Papa's proud of that haircut? <laughs> first and 10, 3.54 remaining in the first half. Dan White's done an outstanding job of leading this team this afternoon. That was Antoine Carter running to the short side of the field. Mohawk time. It is. That's Matt Butkus. Boy, times have changed in college football. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have those the first time around when John Robinson was coaching. I think Dick probably gave him that haircut. <laughs> yeah. Looks like it. Came in late one night and grabbed him by the ears. Hey, as long as that Mohawk points him towards the quarterback, right? White on the toss to Carter. Nothing doing. He'll lose a couple on that play. Good penetration that time by Gerald Hen Henry, the left corner. Look at the quarterback comparison. Johnson, 8 of 12. High completion rate, but just a total of 44 yards. Yeah, but see, we expected Johnson to have a big game. He's hit 70% of his passes, but White we weren't sure of because he really hadn't been tested. He's only started five games, and so far he's been sensational. Seven of 11, 108 yards, and the touchdown. More importantly, no turnovers. 3.05 remaining in the first half. Levy out of the backfield. He's run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Henry again on the tackle. Big defensive stand by USC that time. We said defensively they had to do something. They did that time. Offensively, USC really hasn't been on track yet, Tim. If you're John Robinson and Mike Riley, the offensive coordinator, what are you looking to do now as you look to take possession of the ball? Well, number one, you still have a whole half to play, so you've got to maintain your composure, just regroup and do the things that you do best. Pass the ball. They've tried to establish the run, haven't been able to do it. Thing that's helped them all year is the passing game. They've got to do that. Seahorn back deep at the 27. Jason Seahorn has been bottled up so far. Just an eight yard punt return, a 32 yard punt. Claudius Wright making the tackle. 2.51 to play here in the first half. It's been all Arizona so far. The Wildcats ranked number 12 in the country. Look at some of the top 25 not in action today. Nebraska, Colorado, BYU, and Wisconsin. First down, Rob Johnson. He's going wide open. Top, wide open. Johnny, oh my goodness. You won't see that happen often. Johnny Morton had it slip right through his hands. Well, you know, John Robinson right now has to be shaking his head, saying, what the heck is going on? That was a total missed coverage. Nobody picked up Morton. There was nobody within 10 yards. Look at this. The ball was underthrown. He had to wait for it, but it hits him right between the 8 and the 0. What the heck is happening to SC? Morton may have been shocked that he was so wide open, if nothing else, but still, he should have caught that ball. I'll tell you this. Mild matter, John Robinson may have to 
get things stoked at halftime and get fired up and let these guys wake up. Second down. Johnson to the short side of the field, tried to find Morton again. That time he was blanketed, though, by number 29, Jay Phillips. Look at the total yardage story, Arizona 177 to USC's 52. But a huge difference in the passing department and rushing. Well, I can't figure out what's happened to Johnny Morton. He is a terrific player, big playmaker, go-to guy. Not extraordinarily fast, but he set a record for receiving last week in yards. Just flat out missed that one. Three wide receivers for the Trojans. Johnson under pressure, fumble! That's a live ball. Arizona recovers and takes it down to the five-yard line. Waldrop made the hit. Jackson recovered the fumble in a 19-yard return. The Wildcats poised to score again. The ball on the four-yard line. Johnson is shaken up, too. Watch the pressure. They come with a blitz. They don't blitz often, but they do this time. Came from every direction, and there's Waldrop. He forces it. Jackson picks it up. Jackson just starts carrying guys. Look at Hope. Gets a ride out of it. That defense can come after you. Harris and Boyer came on the stunt. It freed up Waltrip. They had to stop doubling him to pick up the blitz. Tim, it's not an uncommon sight to see the Arizona defenders running down the field for a touchdown. They had two big hits and two fumble recoveries for touchdowns against Illinois earlier in the season. Came into this game with 23 sacks, six fumble recoveries. And they bring Levy in at quarterback now in the goal line situation to run the option, and he hands it off to the fullback. Keep in mind, Levy was an option quarterback in high school, and they go to this occasionally. He, he actually was forced to play quarterback for four games in the 1991 season. Talk about an all-purpose back. He's already returned a punt for a touchdown. He's had some fine runs out of the backfield. Now here he is, quarterback. Trying to make that bear down club, huh? Well, if I'm on defense, the first thing I'm thinking about is option. Johnson and Carter in the backfield. Levy tosses it to Antoine Carter. And he stopped up for a loss back at the 10, going the wrong way. Tackled by Gerald Carruthers. Number 24, Mike Salmon in on the hit as well. 137 to play in the first half, 21 to nothing, Arizona leading. Take Levy out, Dan White comes back in at quarterback. I'm not sure that wasn't going to be a throwback to Levy. He did roll out wide after he tossed it, didn't he? Here's a look at Rob Waldrop. He's an outstanding player, maybe the best nose guard you'll see this year in the country. Third and goal going into the end zone, Troy Dickey touchdown. His second one of the afternoon, a 10-yard catch. right now dominating USC this is the same play they scored on earlier it's the fade the timing pattern and again white throws a strike leads him to the outside and again Dickey uses that height he's 6 3 going over Oliver who's 5 11 and Seahorn Tim, the footwork that time of quarterback Dan White, pretty good, too. Well, you know, this is something that Don Lindsay, or rather, uh, Dwayne Aquina, has really worked on. He wanted to shorten up his motion, his steps. He said he was dropping back seven when it's supposed to be a five-step drop. On the three-step drop, he was a little bit awkward, and he wanted his motion to quicken. He's done both of those, all three of those, all four of those. <laughs> All of the above. That's exactly right. And then some. McLaughlin kicking it off. Kicks it to David Dotson. Dotson finds that wall. And 
runs it out to the 33. It was tackled by Kevin Goser. This is phenomenal. This is totally unexpected. I thought we'd have a tremendous game today. Two evenly matched clubs, I thought. So far, Arizona's just been superior. And to think, not that we're counting USC out, but to think that Dick Tomey was very much concerned about this and very apprehensive. USC right now has run the ball 16 times and gained minus three yards. And a fumble on the exchange. That's the second time that's happened today. Tim, do you think that maybe Johnson's a little gun shy and pulling out a little early? Could that be one of the causes? I don't know. You know, he and Gibson really haven't had any problems before in the exchange. Today they've put it on the ground twice. They've never faced Arizona. There's Dwayne Aquina. He hates being behind that glass. The caged he, animal. He likes to be down on the field. He says, give me your eyes. He likes to look at the eyes. He doesn't like to talk on the phone. He says he can talk on the phone from home. A Hawaii native. Seconds to play in the half. The Trojans, a little success running it this time, out to the 38. That's David Dotson. That was a great explosion by Dotson that time. You know, he grows an inch each week he starts, becomes the guy's chest sticks out, bounces in his step a little bit, little smile, little confidence, walks with pride. The first half has been all Arizona. They lead it 28 to nothing. Rob Johnson disappointed. It's halftime, and now back to New York and John Saunders. All Arizona. They lead 28 to nothing. USC getting set to kick off. USC's worst loss in most recent years, 31 to nothing at Washington. That was in 1990. Chuck Levy's run back a punt for a touchdown this afternoon, trying to bounce it outside. Levy downed at the 18-yard line. Look at the halftime statistics dominated by the University of Arizona. Yeah, look at the rush yards for USC. 18 rushes, 3 yards. That's it. Total yards, 47. I mean, it has been dominated by Arizona. And the big thing, two turnovers. They turned into points. 14 of them to be exact. Ring the bell because school is in. Dan White has been putting on a clinic today. He's 9 for 13, 121 yards, two touchdowns. Only a sophomore, Johnson and Carter lining up out of the eye. Little counter. That's Antoine Carter out to the 23-yard line. USC, to get back in this ball game, has to make every possession offensively and defensively count. Right now, this defense has to stiffen. It's got to make something happen, maybe force a turnover, at least make a punt. But the clock is a factor. With 14.30 to go in the third quarter, I know that sounds funny, but down 28 points, clock is a factor when you only have two quarters to get those 28 points. Remember this afternoon, Cal already has staged a remarkable comeback to defeat Oregon. And White. Complete out of the 33 yard line. He tried to hit Terry Vaughn and he was blanketed right there by Gerald Henry. I believe this is going to be against Arizona for holding. It is. Tim, one of the big concerns of Arizona was the pressure from McGinnis and the likes of McGinnis. But so far, they really don't seem to have applied it, do they? No, they haven't gotten the pressure on him. And on the other side, they have put pressure on Rob Johnson. Arizona has. On the offense, half the distance, repeat second down. And I think that's been the story of the game. White hasn't been pressured, Johnson has. You know, we talked about the biggest loss that USC's had in recent years was 31-0 in Washington. In that game, Washington put similar pressure on Todd Marinovich. Marinovich. Big, big second down here, you don't want to play prevent, you don't want to play soft, you want to get the pressure on him. Underway here in the third quarter. The handoff is to Carter. Bouncing it outside, corralled and necktied at the 11 yard line. And that's great run support by the strong safety Mike Salmon. You know, when Don Lindsay talks about Salmon, he says he's a football player. I mean, he knows the game, he understands it, he leaves, loves to play it. 
He's a fine athlete, as his brother is Tim, who plays for the California Angels. And he will probably be named the American League Rookie of the Year. Tim Salmon batting 283 with 31 homers and 95 RBIs. Third down and 17 for the Wildcats. They run it to Chuck Levy. Levy out to the 24, but he's about five yards shy of the first down. That's all right. They didn't get the first down, so the defense did its job. It stopped them. It made them punt. They've got to do that now to get back in this ball game. Now the offense has to get this thing, should have decent field position, and capitalize. Going back is Jason Seahorn for USC. He's on his own 30-yard line. Four don'ts of the kicking game. Don't be all sides. Don't rough the kicker. Don't let the ball hit the ground and don't clip. Can't afford to make mistakes down 28 to nothing. Peyton on his own 10. And a great punt. Driving Seahorn back to the 20-yard line. Seahorn out to the 28. A 56-yard punt. Let's go back to New York now and John Saunders. John? Mark, we told you about the fantastic finish of the day. Here's a look at it. A comeback from 30 to nothing. Dave Barr, 26 yards to Ihani Uezoke. It's a one-point game. They go for the two-point conversion to Mike Caldwell, and they get it and win it 42-41 after being down by 30. Mark, back to you. Whew, what a catch that was in the corner of the end zone. That sets up a huge matchup next week with Washington for Cal. And Rob Johnson goes down at the 22-yard line. Who else? Rob Waltrip. Everybody knows what a great player he is. All-American last year, All-American this year. But they say the thing that really is special about him is his work ethic. The guy works as hard in practice as he does in games, just fights through the block. And I mean just blast by Kyle Ramsey and gets the sack. That's his second sack of the day. Waldrop listed as 6'2", Tim, but he's very vehement about the fact that he's actually taller than that. Well, they say he's not that big. 6'2", 275. It's a pretty good size for a nose guard, if you ask me. He's got five sacks now for the year. He's got one of those bodies by Jake, too. On the offense, just second down. He was the Pac-10 Morris Trophy winner last year. Boy, what a player. One Rob having a good day, Waldrop. The other Rob, Johnson, looking incredulously to the sidelines, wondering what's going on. Second down and 19 for the Trojans. That's what's going on right now. Mark, when you're getting that kind of pressure, you've got to go to the quick three-step drops and release it. You can't sit back there and wait. Look at this. Down again at the 12. And look who it is, Waldrop again. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Give him six sacks now for the year. His third sack of the day. I can't believe that they're not going to a quicker release for the quarterback. You've got a guy like this bearing down on you. Waltrip's going to get to you in no time. You've got to release it before he gets back there. Three-step drop, bang, bang, release. Waltrip swaying some of those Lombardi votes his way this afternoon. Third and 25. It off. Well, at least he wasn't sacked. Dotson brought down at the 11-yard line. Not the type of opening series that you want if you're a USC booster. That was almost embarrassing. Waldrop and Hoffman in on that stop. Eleven sixteen remaining in the third quarter. Each team has had one offensive series. Go back to that booming punt. And then the defense forced him back. Now Arizona's going to have great field position. Stonehouse's punt down to the 44. Levy fumbles. Well, I guess he got it. Still waiting a ruling by the officials. And now they say USC does have it. Oh, that's big now. USC can come back on, start at 45-yard line up near midfield. They can get anything going offensively. They can get back into this ball game. Branford Banta, number 82 for USC, recovered the fumble. And like you said, they have great field position now at the 46. I thought he was going to call the fair catch. He didn't. They were down on him, and he took his eye off the ball just for a second. 
could actually see him look up. Johnson to pass. Looking up top on the post pattern, incomplete for Kenny Grace. Claudius Wright, step for step with him. Tim, what do you think about the job that the Arizona cornerbacks have done this afternoon? Obviously, they've been successful. And then the one time they were beaten, and had a missed assignment, and Morton dropped the pass. Give Phillips and Wright a lot of credit. Now, we know Maryland has a porous defense, but 46 to 7? Well, they have the worst defense in the entire Division 1A. Johnson to the short side of the field. Johnny Morton. And a first down at the 38 of the Wildcats. Slightly surprised me about that Penn State scores that Maryland only had seven points. They give up a lot of points, but they also score a lot in that run and shoot. So far, Penn State shut them down pretty good. In fairness to them, though, a lot of young players on that squad. Donnie Morton with a 16-yard pickup. That moves the chains, and it's first and 10 for USC with 10.38 to play here in the third quarter. Johnny Morton faced a lot of man-to-man -man coverage last week against Washington State, and he had that record-setting week. But this afternoon, it's been a totally different story. 43 yards on five catches. His team trails 28 love. The USC Trojans catching a break. Finally have good field position. Finally hook up with Johnny Morton. Finally have a first down in Arizona territory. Pressure from the backside. Johnson gets it off complete to the 37. That's the tight end, Banta. His second catch of the afternoon. Right now, number 49, Sean Harris. He was pushed out of bounds that time by Sean Harris. Second down and seven to go. Mike Riley, the offensive coordinator beside John Robinson. Trying to get that offense on track. Johnny Morton on the quick hitch. And he's run out of bounds at the 32. Mark, that was the three-step drop I've been talking about. Now, they do like to go to the five-step. They do like to look at their uh, receivers, the wideouts, try to get them downfield. But right now, with the pressure they're receiving, this three-step and release, I think that's the way to go. Mike Riley, as I said, looking for some answers. He's one of the rising stars in the coaching fraternity. Oregon State didn't get past the Arizona 35 last week, so USC's done something that they didn't. Third and three. Nice. Over the middle complete, and a fumble. Wildcats with the ball, and it's loose again. Arizona ball. So they convert, but just momentarily, they cough it up, put it on the ground, and Arizona has the ball again. Do you believe it? They go to the quick release, they hit it, they've got the first down, and he fumbles the ball. Johnny McWilliams made the reception. Yeah, but he got branded by Brandon Sanders. I'm telling you. Just stripped that ball, raked it right out of there. Watch this, here comes 18 Sanders. Bam, take that right arm, knock it out, force it with the left on the other side. Then let Boyer come and pick it up, get some help from your other fellas in blue, and bingo. Hey, Larry McDuff told us that Brandon Sanders was going to have a big game this afternoon. This is the best defense in the country. It stopped the run, forces turnovers, pressures the quarterback. First and 10, the handoff by White. That's Carter for a pair. Three turnovers for USC to Arizona's one. Joe Barry making the tackle. It's amazing to me how poorly USC has played. Give a lot of credit to Arizona. They forced that. But I mean, we saw Morton drop a pass. We saw USC unable to get a first down on fourth and inches. Now we see him pick up the first here and fumble down in Arizona territory when they finally had something, to, something going. 9.46 to go in the third quarter. Antoine Carter. Carter. You know, last week he scored on the identical play. He picked up 17 that time. Last week he went 76 yards for the six. He was tackled by Gerald Henry and Jason Oliver on that play. McGinnis this time tries to come up the middle. He's going to make the play, but he loses his footage. He's got him dead to rights in the back. 
Carter was there, McGinnis was there, but he lost his footing. Consequently, Twan goes out and picks up big yardage and they move the chains. Boy, they had McGinnis in the middle of that time where they wanted him, he came through cleanly and fell down. Levy now checking into the backfield. White going upstairs. He tried to hit Kerry Thomas, but it was incomplete. And the 24, Taylor was covered by Gerald Henry. But Taylor saying, I had you. I had you. Henry saying, yeah, but you didn't catch it. Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator for USC, came into this game concerned about giving up the big play. Now, USC has had some breakdowns. And again today, at crucial times, they've been unable to stop Arizona. Here's a long second down. Split backs. The handoff is to Levy. And Chuck Levy is out to the 40-yard line. About four yards short of the first down, tackled by Darren Calloway. You know, Tim, getting back to Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator for USC, when we had our meetings with them on Wednesday, we asked him how he was doing, and he said, well, you know, some days wine, some days grapes, some days chicken, some days feathers. Yeah, unfortunately, in this business, when you're a coach, one day you're drinking the wine, the next day you're stopping the grapes. <laughs> He's behind that glass somewhere. Eight and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. The play action and Michael complete to Billy Johnson. First down, Arizona. A pickup of 13 yards. Good execution that time. He was tackled by Jason Seymour. Here's one of those breakdowns you talk about. Big third down play, and they slip Billy Johnson out into the flats for the catch. Well, you know, he's really become a football player. Averages six yards a carry. He's got a touchdown. He's a pretty good receiver. First down and 10. Ball at the 48. Johnson, the fullback, in the eye. He's got the corner if he wants to run. And he finds Terry Vaughn for the first down. Vaughn out of bounds at the 32. Boy, Dan White has been the picture of perfection, almost perfection. Rolled out nicely and delivered it. That time, there was actually absolutely no flood control for USC. He could have run that ball and gotten the first down. Instead, he opted to pass, and Vaughn was wide open. They could have gotten it either way. Look at the discrepancy in first downs, 13 to 4. And White, a Penn State transfer. Whistles on the field. You know, this is just turning into a good old-fashioned licking right now. Seven fifty-two to play in the third quarter. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Repeat first down. Arizona leading twenty-eight to nothing. And if they hold on, they're sure to move up in the polls. You know what's surprising to me is the fact that you hear so much about the Arizona defense, and yet offensively, the Wildcats have four backs, Carter, Levy, Johnson, and Taylor, all averaging five yards or better. Yeah, you know, it's time for the offense to take a bow and get some recognition here. Chuck Levy knifing his way up the middle down to the 32-yard line, tackled by Brian Williams. It looks so much quicker than Southern Cal. Those backs aren't exactly slow, Carter and Levy, with good speed. Dick Tomey, last year's Pac-10 Coach of the Year. Yeah, in his seventh year now, not only the Pac-10 Coach of the Year, but also at Nowak, he did that at Hawaii. It was interesting what he was saying and his coaching staff was saying about not being able to wear jackets and ties. He only let them wear Hawaiian shirts. Billy Johnson on the carry that time. 7.05 to play in the third quarter. Joe Barry making the tackle for the Trojans. Arizona came into this game, and they said they had to stay away from McGinnis. He was their first key. Read where they line up McGinnis. USC moves him around, but I'll tell you right now, it doesn't matter. They're just doing it everywhere. Third down and seven. Out of the shotgun. Taylor 
got rocked at the 20 yard line. You know, he's not upset about getting hit hard like that. He's upset because he knows he should have made the catch. Dan White put that ball right where he had to. Joe Barry really rocked Taylor, too. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And it's field goal time. Steve McLaughlin attempting one from almost 50 yards out. He's got the leg. And it's good. That's his longest field goal ever. They're calling it 49. The Wildcats tack three more points on the board. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the new Chevy cars for 1994. And Allied Signals Autolite spark plugs, guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. On a warm, clear Saturday afternoon, Arizona is dominating USC. John Prashen now in to kick off for Arizona. And there's Giles Peller and this guy is a monument to consistency. Look he's how many 86 games. years old. As a matter of fact, he's the super fan. He's attending his 731st consecutive game. Here's a guy. He had an ab abdominal uh, aneurysm after the Penn State game. And here he is today here. Dotson out to the 18-yard line. And he's seen some, some poor performances probably by USC, but this has probably got to rank up there. Oh, but I tell you what, he deserves more than a game ball. If you have a abdominal aneurysm after the Penn State game, you go in, you have surgery, and not miss a game thanks to the off week, I'll tell you what, that's special. That's playing hurt. That's special. 731 consecutive for that 86-year-old. Hey, speaking of guys in their 80s, though, how about our own Billy Edwards for ABC? Had surgery. We wish him all the best. We love him dearly. And Hope he gets back. Really a trooper as well. First down and ten for Johnson. New back in the game. That's Sean Walters, the six foot, two hundred and twenty-five pound freshman. Walters had the flu after the Houston game and missed a couple of uh, missed a few practices and valuable practice time. One of the three tailbacks by committee for USC. Five forty eight remaining in the third. Johnson backside pressure steps up. Throws a dart at the thirty three yard line complete to Tyler Cashman, the tight end, a fourteen yard pickup and a first down. Tyler Cashman is what they call the H-back. They like to move him. He had six catches and a touchdown against North Carolina, but comes into this game with only eight receptions. Here's Giles. Smile for the camera, Giles. Get those boys fired up. To the short side of the field, Johnny Morton completed the 38. Wrapped up right away by number 29, Jay Phillips. It has been all Arizona this afternoon, right from the very beginning. Second and six, quick drop by Johnson. He touched, he's down. That's ruled down at the 42-yard line. Still, there's that three-step drop, and it was well thrown. And Grace made the catch, but his knee touched. Well, Monday night on ABC Sports, it's an NFC-AFC showdown. Dan Marino and the Dolphins battling the red-hot Washington and hungry Washington Redskins. Six Pacific, seven Mountain, nine Eastern. And don't bet on Marino running for another touchdown. <laughs> Johnson gets rid of it quickly. The problem is it was batted down. Big old Jim Hoffman is 6'4". You know, they've got a pension for doing that. They knock things down as much as anybody in the nation. Jimmy Hopkins in the area as well. Yeah, he's 6'5". 
He's a great story, Hopkins is. Graduated, wanted to go airborne last year. Drove by the practice field, he says, hey guys, I'm taking some more credits. I'm not going airborne, I want to play with you. I've got a year of eligibility left. So he came back. Stonehouse punting from his own 32. Richard Dice calls for the fair catch on his own 23. A 33-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Arizona pitching a shutout. Nothing. Dick Tomey with a lot of California players on his roster, and it's a source of motivation. Here's what he had to say about it. Uh, that are from California, that uh, are very highly motivated because they they love playing against USC or UCLA. But we've got more now that they tried to recruit, although certainly not everybody, because we've got a number of players on our team that really nobody tried to recruit. And because of that, they're highly motivated. Not much there for Levy. Gets about two. Tackled by Joe Barry. You know, Tim, sometimes a little chip on the shoulder can be a good source of motivation. The school doesn't recruit you. You want to show them something. Yeah, but you know what, Mark? This school doesn't have to take a backseat to anybody now in football. Strong offensively and defensively. They're about to go 5-0 and 2-0 and and in the Pac-10. Building a lot of tradition of their own right now. Definitely becoming the favorite to go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Levy on the sweep. Tackled at the 24. Chuck Levy's had a good afternoon in terms of all-purpose yardage. Ran back a punt for a touchdown. Running the ball well on the ground. Tackled by McGinnis that time. He'll check out of the game. Last week we had UCLA and Stanford. Tonight, USC and Arizona. Next week, Cal and Washington. And after that three weeks, I think anybody that follows the Pac-10 will have a pretty good indication of which of those clubs is going to the Rose Bowl. And knowing, Washington knowing that they can't go to the Rose Bowl this year, they would probably love to play the role of the spoiler. White throws it incomplete intended for Dickey at the 33-yard line. He was covered by Jason Seahorn. Wildcat fans today are getting the Dan White that they had anticipated in the preseason. I think they wanted too much too soon because he really had never started in collegiate football. Came in, he was inexperienced, had all those turnovers, struggled early. But I'll tell you, he's confident today and he's throwing ropes. He's thrown for two touchdowns and run in for one himself. Matt Payton standing his own nine. Jason Seahorn back at the 33-yard line. Seahorn hasn't been given much of a chance to return one this afternoon, and this one goes out of bounds right around the 40. Well, tonight, Eddie Murphy's back just the way you love him in the original Beverly Hills Cop on the ABC Saturday Night Movie. Then Ted Shackelford guests on the commission as a civic leader gone bad. It's all tonight on ABC starting at 8, 7 Central. Geez, that's a new concept, Tim, a civic leader or a politician gone bad. <laughs> 2.35 remaining here in Tucson in the third quarter. USC yet to get on the scoreboard. This night begins to fall. Play action by Johnson. Incomplete intended for the tight end, Banta. And he was wrapped up immediately by Phillips. The quarterbacks for Arizona have done a good job this afternoon. Really have. Give Jay Phillips a lot of credit. Give uh, Claudius Wright a lot of credit. And also, the safeties, especially the way that Arizona uses them defensively, Sanders and Bowie, the free safety always stays to the middle of the field, gives the quarterback, the opposing quarterback, a tough read. Johnson, just 15 of 24, 104 yards. Completes this one, though. Number 88, Edward Hervey. And there's Wright again, immediately, as soon as the catch is made, takes him down. That's great closing. Hervey, a JC transfer from Pasadena Community College. Minus two yards rushing on 22 carries. That's par for the course for the Arizona D. That's right. They came in to this game after four games giving up minus four yards rushing. We thought this would be the first test, and we thought USC would have some success, but they haven't. Pressure on Johnson through the arms of his receiver and almost picked off by Sean Harris. Tyler Cashman touched it 
It was a tough catch though. The ball came back behind and he had to twist around. I think Arizona was just fed up. They kept reading about how Southern Cal was 3 and 0 against Arizona when the Arizona team was ranked. And it, how Troy is 5 and 1 in Tucson. They said they don't want any parts of that. They're coming out and they're giving them a good old fashioned licking. Stonehouse with a nice punt. Dice trying to fake out the coverage, and he does. As the ball rolls through the end zone, and it'll come out to the 20. Stonehouse's leg has got to be a little bit tired. Oh, uh, get out of here. The guy gets in the game maybe five or six times a night. He's punted a lot today. A look at some of the Pac-10 action today. The big game, of course, California coming back to defeat Oregon 42 to 41, a game in which they trailed 30 love. Oregon State coming back from their loss last week to win 30 to 14. I'm still laughing about Stonehouse. If he's tired after eight punts. Patterson and Carter in the backfield. White throws a dart complete to the Dice Man. Dial 1-800-DICE-MAN and you get a 20-yard pickup and a first down. Now the California player, Mission Hills, California, Dice, redshirt freshman. You know, the defenders, defenders just missed him. I mean, it was like they closed their eyes. Seahorn and Oliver missed him. They should have just sandwiched him and taken him out. Spoken like a true monster back. Huh? I don't believe that. I can't. I still can't get over that. They must have closed their eyes or something. Here's Carter on the sweep. Twan. Down to the 47. As we approach a minute to go in the third quarter. Tackled by Mike Salmon. You know, Salmon is a guy that has really had an interesting two weeks for USC. He's become the team's starting place kicker because of injuries to Cole Ford. You know, we talked about his brother Tim playing for the Angels, but he too is a pretty good baseball player. I'll tell you what, they've spanked USC today. I might have to agree with that. Carry out to the 47 by Chuck Levy. Tackled by Mike Hins. He has come of age. Danny White, support from Levy and Carter. And each quarterback has that defining moment or defining game in their careers. And this could be one of them for Dan White. Well, I'll go along with that. That was the last play of the third quarter. Arizona dominating USC 31-0. We'll return with more action between USC and Arizona after this message. And a word from our ABC. <laughs> Willie McGinnis knows that his team is defeated. Oh, this game's been over for a while. it so they can talk it. Arizona with the extra point on McLaughlin and it's 38-0. Danny White has been sensational. Here's a guy who had to sit out because of his transfer year from Penn State. He's just made it 38 to nothing. Really grew up on the scout team against this number one defense emulating guys like Toretto and Bledsoe. Look at this. That's a perfect strike to Gary Taylor. You know, I don't even think Gerald Henry had a shot the nickelback. Number three, watch this. White just steps up, knows he let him. That ball's perfectly thrown. Bingo. Look at that. Never broke stride. Henry, number three, never even saw it. Taylor, the fastest of the receivers for Arizona. It's almost as if Danny White's saying, I've heard enough about this defense. It's good, but so are we. Taylor with a brother, Gary Taylor, on the team. Here's John Prashen's kick. Fumble.
doubled at the 22 by Sean Walters. And he's drilled at the 27. What a way to start the, open, the fourth quarter. Danny White throws a rope and puts six more on the board. He'll remember this one for a long time. Well, I'll tell you this, Jack and Dossie White, parents of Danny White, sitting home in Oceanside, California, have to love this. First down and 10 for USC. Johnson stays up, well, for a while anyway. Bruski, Teddy Bruski. And look at him go. <laughs> Celebrate. Can you not get excited watching guys who get excited playing a game of football? Johnson just lost his foot and came up. You cannot waste that much time against this defense. They get after you. They know the difference between come here and sick him. And that guy right there, Teddy Bruschi, loves this game and he plays it well. Some nice backflips afterwards, too. And the fans were not booing him after. They were saying, boo. Johnson, incomplete intended for Ken Grace. And it's third and ten. Well, still, still looming big, Mark, with those three turnovers. And then if you look at the rushing yards, minus two, we talked at the beginning of the broadcast that the difference in this game was whether USC could run the football, and obviously they haven't been able to. But then when you turn it over three times and you give up good field position and let them go after it on a short field, it's like running downhill. We talked about it earlier. Sure makes things a lot easier. We had a clue early in the game when the Arizona defense stopped USC on fourth and inches. Flags down. Next week. There's no penalty. Defense coming into the zone causes the offense to move up. Results in a no play. Third down. See, these guys are doing it out of habit now. <laughs> They're just throwing the flag out of habit. He's about to. He hadn't even threatened yet. Never been shut out. I'm trying to cut a deal. Try anything. Brown and Walters in the offset eye. Race in motion. The handoff is to Sean Walters. Makes a nice move outside. And Walters is down to the 31. Tackled by Claudius Wright. Sean Walters is another one of those young running backs that they have at USC. He's just a freshman, 225 pounds. He's powerful. But again, USC unable to get the first down, has to punt it back. Had a good look there at Larry McDuff, the defensive coordinator. What a great job he's done. He'll be proud of his guys. Stonehouse with his ninth punt of the day. When they told Stonehouse to shake a leg, they weren't kidding. He's been busy. 38-0, Arizona. Ten minutes. While virtual reality isn't quite here yet, the car is the new Accord from Honda. Thirteen twenty-one to play here in Tucson. Arizona leading USC thirty-eight to nothing. White hands it off to Gary Taylor. 
Last time White was on the field, he threw a touchdown pass to Taylor's brother, Kerry Taylor. Deadlocked in the NL West. Tim, who do you like? San Francisco or Atlanta? I'm putting you on the spot. I like Atlanta because of the pitching staff they have, especially if they come down into that playoff. I just think San Francisco has a tough time with them, even at the stick. Of course, the playoff game will be a candlestick on Monday if, if in fact, both win tomorrow or both lose. You know, Barry Bonds has been criticized for not coming up in the clutch, but he's done exactly that down the stretch in this last part of September and early October. Taylor again. And he got jacked at the 28-yard line, a drive-by of sorts by Mike Salmon. And a strong safety. Boy, Taylor, watch this. He'll take a lick. Just keep it inside out. Tuck that tail, sky the eyes, and just drive right on through him. That's almost a frustration hit. Salmon says, here I come, folks. You know what else he did? Took that shoulder and put it right in where the ball is. So give uh, Taylor a lot of credit for holding that, that ball after a pretty good lick by Salmon. Third down and three. And flags on the field. It was like laundry down there. We have 11.57 to play in the ball game. False start on the offense, still third down. Seen a lot of that this afternoon. Yeah, but really haven't had too many mistakes by Arizona. For the most part, they've played mistake-free football and done what they've had to do. Last week, Rob Johnson threw for 392 yards and a school record. This week, not even close. He's had that incredible 70% completion rate. I'll be honest, I'm just thinking against, against an aggressive defense like Arizona has, you can't go to the five and seven step drops until at least you establish some sort of offense which puts them on their heels. Boy, they were just going after it tonight. They didn't even have to think about it. White, on the other hand, has been close to perfect, just like that pass for the first down to Taylor. He is throwing the ball, Tim, with so much authority. He's now 14 for 21, 229 yards, three touchdowns, and counting. From San Diego, California, Dan White. And you know what else? This isn't just one game performance, but this is a confidence builder. He can put this in the bank and ride this the rest of the year. He's only started five games in his entire career. Taylor who cuts it upfield. And Taylor is down to the 38-yard line. He got a great block by Jason Patterson on the corner. Tackled by Willie Lowry. You know, you mentioned Dan White's parents. His father, Jack, played quarterback at Penn State. And that's where Danny went. So I really didn't have much opportunity. Wanted to go out west, came here. And now they make the change. This is Ryan Hessen, and Hessen is just a freshman. He's from Tucson, so he's homegrown. Getting into the game with ten and a half minutes to go. Comes in and gets a delay game. Now Brady Batten is the normal backup. He too is a freshman, but he's out with a an injury, bad shoulder. So Ryan Hessen comes in and he gets his first snaps in his college career. Yeah, last week, Batten did see some time in the second quarter against Oregon State. He came in at the start of the second period. Disconcerting signals by the defense. First down. Well, I want what to is tell that, you something. Tim? Disconcerting signals by the defense. In other words, they're trying to throw the young quarterback off. They're yelling. The snap counts, the cadence, trying to get people to jump all sides. That's not one you see every day. I used to do that occasionally. <laughs> An admission. Does a lot of that actually happen that doesn't get called? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good, good ploy. Nice run that time by Antoine Carter. That's one of those sportsmanship things. They just don't think you should do it. It's not good sportsmanship. It's funny because the last time I looked, you don't get points for sportsmanship on the board, do you? Next Saturday, it's an all-Florida affair. Florida State number one against number three, Miami. Begins at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Mountain time. And then 
The second half of your double dip, Washington number 15 against number 17, Cal. Nesson hands it off up the middle to Taylor. Taylor bowling his way down to the 44. You can just watch the offensive line firing out, not only controlling the line of scrimmage, but taking the defense and actually moving them back five yards down the field. The tackle that time by Morrell. A win like this does not only indicate what's taking place on this field, but it indicates what took place in spring practice, also in the fall. Right now, Arizona just looks like a bigger, stronger, faster football team. And Tim, their fans have mailed this one in. They're doing the wave. Taylor on the sweep. Tackled the 42 that time. Strike a pose, boys. You deserve it. See Danny White's chin. Danny White, number 16, right there, the quarterback. He got uh, dinged pretty good last week in the game. Actually had what they say, eight stitches in his chin. Had it sewn up after the game. They wanted to know how tough he was because he, he had never played. They said, sure, he's got the talent, but can he hang in there when he's bleeding and he's banged up and they're still getting after him? He's hung in there pretty well. He's got the look, doesn't he? Right out of central casting. Look at the quarterback. 8.44 to play. They run it up the middle this time. USC's dragging, totally fatigued. Having a tough time just getting off the turf after a tackle. Meanwhile, Arizona's bringing in young, fresh legs. And on this drive, they're dominating. It's a pretty big third down right here for the young kids, but that's about it. Be nice for Hessen to get some confidence. He tosses it to Taylor. Taylor trying to get to the corner, doesn't quite make it. The USC defense stringing that one out nicely that time. Gerald Henry coming up to provide support from his corner spot. That's inexperience on uh, Gary Taylor, redshirt freshman. Had he cut that thing up, he had the blocks, he had the hole to get the first. Instead, tried to get the outside corner and couldn't. There's the Dice man, Richard Dice, the freshman. Where can I get a haircut like that? Scary, isn't it? <laughs> Looks like our producer Doug Wilson's haircut, doesn't it? And Doug didn't even have to get a haircut to get it. <laughs> 8.04 remaining in the fourth quarter. And there's a timeout down on the field. Arizona thinking about roses. Here's a warning, well, we're swarming 5-0 baby, and Arizona is some kind of rolling now. Yeah, they haven't been 5-0 since 1975. Really put themselves in the driver's seat as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned as well. Washington, of course, ineligible to go to the Rose Bowl. Cal still unbeaten after that great comeback today. We'll take a look at the, the Pac-10 in just a minute. Oregon may not be out of it either. Strong performance today. Punt bounces to the 20 and then comes back out to the 23. We talked about the Pac-10 standings. Punt of 16 yards. We haven't given Arizona the win yet. Who has? <laughs> I have. 38 to nothing over USC with seven minutes left. You'd have a scoop if they came back and won this. Graphically, of course. Arizona plays Cal on November the 13th. That'll be a big game. Keep in mind, Washington's still unbeaten in the Pac-10. Have that loss to Ohio State, but they are ineligible to go to the Rose Bowl this year. And next week, a game you'll see on ABC, Washington at Cal. We have a new quarterback in for USC. Kyle Waholtz. Waholtz, 6'5", 220 pounds, a sophomore. Complete to Rory Brown. Around the backup fullback. Let me throw some numbers at you just to emphasize what's taking place here today. USC has only five first downs in the game. They've run the ball 24 times, and they have two yards. That's it. Arizona has 10 tackles for losses at 17 last week as you look at Kyle Wahos. How do you think he feels coming in against this defense? Hands it off to Walters. Walters tackled after a gain of about five yards. 
Been a nice couple of days out here in Tucson, hasn't it? Great weather. Had a chance to walk by the facilities here through the McHale Center. Those guys haven't had a great weekend. No, uh, they've been beaten up. You know, it's easier to take this than it would a close loss, but I mean, a loss, loss is a loss. They knew they were out of this thing in halftime. Third down and two. ahead that time. Walters again. He'll have the first down. He's got pretty good numbers, doesn't he? Just a sophomore, 6'5", 220 pounds. You know, all quarterbacks now seem to be 6'4", 6'5". You don't see many of the young, the little guys anymore. Out of the same mold. Johnson on the sidelines now. First down and 10 for Waholtz. Little play action. He fires another dart and another completion right at midfield. Ryan Lenderman makes the catch. We're seeing new players in for USC, and they're ha having some success. Showed a pretty live arm on that throw, didn't he? Out of bounds at midfield. 15 right man, first down USC. Interesting to think about what USC has done under John Robinson. Throwing the ball well, but not today. A big second quarter, the deciding factor for Arizona. Drop play to Walters. Getting outside. Turns on the Jets. Sean Walters pushed out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Showed a little speed that time getting to the corner. A 29-yard pickup and a first down for the Trojans. And John Robinson always looking for the positive. Sees another running back here that's a young guy. He's just a freshman. He's the more powerful of the three guys. He's 6 feet, 205 pounds. The freshman, Walters, though, breaks to the outside. That's a nice cut. Great vision on his part. And then just beats the contain. Shows pretty good speed. Then finally, the pursuit angle by the safety. Sanders knocks him out of, and knocks him out of bounds. Just to recap for you why the Trojans are in this tailback dilemma. Dwight McFadden, their starting tailback at the beginning of the season, was injured in the first game. Waholtz to pass. Incomplete. Through the arms of his intended receiver, Lenderman. He drilled that one again. Didn't take anything off of it. You know, you mentioned Dwight McFadden, the tailback who was out with the ankle injury. Now, last year, USC was last in the Pac-10 in rushing. They're still trying to get that going. But expectations were high, probably too high when the year began because they have all these young, talented guys. They had McFadden, they had Dotson, who's a freshman, Fields, a sophomore, and Walters, who's a freshman. But it just hadn't developed. Second and 10. The handoff is to Scott Fields. And Fields makes it down to the 14. You can't get the running game going. And you just do what Arizona did today to start this ball game. Go to an eight-man front, load up, say, if you can't beat us, we're going to stop that run. You have, have to beat us with the pass, and they couldn't do it. Robinson's worst loss as a head coach of USC, 49-19 to against Notre Dame. 1977, of course, the next year he turned it around, and they won the national championship. We also talked earlier about Robinson not being shut out at USC. We're trying to get some points on the board right here. Hit Ken Grace complete at the 10 yard line, and he is very close to the first down. Let's rewind the tape a little bit for you and remind everyone that they lost their starting left tackle, USC did. Tony Baselli with a dislocated kneecap early in the first half. That only goes with the other linemen who are out. Len Garicki is out. Joel Chrisman is out with an injury. Pollock couldn't play today because of a shoulder injury, so Ramsey took his place. Baselli went out, so Kiderlin took his spot. And next week, USC has to travel up to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks. First down, Walholtz, wide open touchdown, Trojans, Rory Brown. An 11-yard touchdown pass, and they finally get on the board with 4.23 to play. And that's going to really hurt the starters of Arizona. You know, they played so hard, so well, they go out. They wanted that shutout. They wanted that big goose egg on the board. They take great pride in that, but they don't get it here. 
Waholtz comes in and has a pretty good drive, albeit against the substitutes. But again, it's the quick three-step drop and get it out. There's Brown all by himself, a missed assignment by the linebacker. And the touchdown for USC. So they're all on the board finally. And Mike Salmon, the starting strong safety slash place kicker with the extra point. Arizona still leads 38-7, to but the Trojans get on the board with a pass from Waholtz to Brown. Hold on. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, overnight the package. Yeah, sure. Overnight it. Might as well overnight it. Overnight this. Overnight this. Overnight. Overnight it. Overnight. Sometimes overnight is overkill. So kick the habit with priority mail from the Postal Service. It's not overnight, but it's fast delivery, special handling, and two pounds is only $2.90. Morning. Thanks. When overnight is overdoing it, remember, we deliver for you. Call and we'll start today. For this guy, any deodorant will do. But these guys need Speed Stick, antiperspirant that gives 110%. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick, for movers and shakers, the number one, the only one. Hitachi? Wait, I know, I know. They make... Look, your favorite show. Oh. Hitachi okay. makes big screen TVs and 20,000 other entertaining products. Hitachi. The interior of the Honda Civic was developed with a sunblock to help protect the fabric from fading and cracking over the life of the car. So while you may have a limit on your time in the sun, the Civic doesn't. See you tomorrow. Welcome back to Tucson. That's the story. 4.23 to play. And the band plays on. They have really bared down today. You know, as we look at the band, an interesting story with them is that a few years back, they were in danger of becoming extinct because of a lack of funding. But some local supporters of the band, through private donations, gathered up enough funds, and they're still here. still raise 35% of their money through private donations and funds. Gotta have a band. Moscovich with the kickoff that goes through the end zone. Tomorrow night on ABC, America's Funniest Home Videos. Then Raven Simone guests on the new America's Funniest People, followed by Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Then on the Sunday night movie, Kate Jackson and Lori Loughlin star in Empty Cradle. All tomorrow night on ABC. Boy, things don't get any easier for Southern Cal. USC plays eight bowl teams this year. Got a very tough schedule. Already played UNC, Penn State. Got Notre Dame, Washington, Stanford. Washington State, Oregon. It's a tough way to go. Yeah, but you know, but John Robinson really has instilled a new attitude at USC. He proved it by going for the win at Penn State. Have a new back in the game, Robert Coulter. He gets the carry on first down. We would like to pause five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. Four minutes to play, 38 to 7. I'm Mark Jones in the house along with Tim Brandt. Hesson, the quarterback for Arizona. Dan White, the starter, taking a well-deserved rest. Coulter again. Mark, several times tonight you've mentioned Bear Down, that being the slogan, the battle cry here at Arizona. It all came from a student athlete named Button Salmon. He was in a car accident, and on his deathbed, he told the players and the coaches he passed away word alone just a bear down fellas bear down they did and ironically on that his last game in Arizona was exactly 67 years ago today October 2nd 1926 and yeah, they paid tribute to him with a statue in 1986 Taylor eluding a couple of tacklers trying to bounce
bounce it outside and brought down at the 30. Hey, don't forget, next Saturday, ABC Sports, a great doubleheader of college football. We have Florida State number one against number three, Miami. Florida State, a big winner today. And then the second half of your doubleheader, it's a Pac-10 clash between Washington and Cal. And don't forget to call your local cable operator for the pay-per-view game in your area. I'm excited about that game. Cal must just be explosive to come back the way they did today. Got to have something in your helmet. <laughs> so got a rocket booster. Taylor on the carry. Tackled by Small. Under the lights at Arizona Stadium. Crowd has thinned out, and well it should. This game was over early. We approach the final two minutes. 38 to 7, Arizona. You can hear the rumblings already from Fraternity Row. Coulter again. A little bit of speed up to the 43-yard line. Terry Barnum, the cornerback down the bottom here, tried to come up with run support, turn it back in. He just couldn't do it. Slipped on the turf, then got blocked. Talk about having a hard night. Coulter giving Carter and Levy and Johnson a breather. Arizona executing its game plan to perfection this afternoon. Well, they came in wanting to open the field, stretch things out, use the entire field. They have done that with great success. Passing and running. Holter again up the middle. Tim, we talked about the fact that USC scored that last touchdown, and the defense, Arizona's defense, gave up six points, and now seven points. They'll probably have some kind of kangaroo court session after the game and find the guys that allowed that touchdown. No, I, I tell you what, this is a very close unit, very aggressive unit. I, I, I know they didn't want to give up any points, but they've had 10 tackles for losses today. Last week they had 17 tackles behind the line of scrimmage. It's one of the best defenses I think you'll see. I mean, obviously, they're number one in the nation, but this team just works so well together. They run to the football. They're awfully talented. Second down and eight. Hessen hands it off up the middle for a gain about one yard. That's Jason Patterson, the third string fullback. 5'11, 232 pound senior. Lots of pleased flans here, here today at uh, Arizona Stadium. Arizona has an open week next week, so they'll have time to get healthy. Think about this win and look ahead. Last week, we rode into the L.A. Coliseum with aspirations of going to the Rose Bowl, and we're upset by Southern Cal. They won't let that happen again. They say they're taking things this time, just looking one game at a time, the old cliche, but it's true. Taylor up the middle, close to the first down. But that was, in all probability, the last play of the game, and it is. The jury was out on Dick Tomey's team. Some people weren't sure about their competition, but the jury has resoundingly approved the verdict. Arizona's real. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Sean Walters from USC and Danny White, who was 14 of 21 for 228 yards and three touchdowns. Chevrolet would donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their achievements. The final score, 38-7. We're out of here.